You asked for it, so we're doing it. If you watched our previous Wheel With Test video, you already know what we're here to do. If you haven't watched the previous video, we'd recommend you go back and give it a watch. Essentially, we're trying to find out what combination of tire width and wheel width are the fastest on the track. We've taken the four fastest combinations from our previous test, and now we're gonna test them on a full-size road course. So that means we have a set of 225, 45, 17 tires on eight inch wheels and a set on nine inch wheels. And we have 245, 40, 17 tires on eight inch wheels and nine inch wheels. The last time around, all these options were very closely matched, but the 225 on the nine inch wheel set the fastest laps in the test. Now it's time to see if that holds true with higher speeds and longer turns. Our drivers are excited for what's sure to be a great day of testing, so let's get to it. To get the most out of our testing and also ensure our BRZs were ready for use on the track, we made some minor modifications in the days leading up to our test. We added white line adjustable camber bolts and gave all our cars identical alignments with two degrees of negative camber at the front wheels. The added negative camber would help use more of the tire's contact patch through turns, enhancing traction and also improving wear. Front and rear TR Select brake kits with Hawk DTC60 pads and Centric 120 series rotors were also installed and properly bedded in to make sure we could confidently slow our cars without any fade that would interfere with our results. Once those important items were addressed, we were ready to hit the track. Similar to what we found on our test track, the 225 on the 8 inch wheel felt incredibly natural. The steering responded quickly, with a nice buildup of effort and great feedback for the driver. It always felt like all four tires were working in unison, with just a small amount of rotation that carved a tidy arc at corner exit. The braking was strong, overall traction was great, and it was satisfying to drive lap after lap. The 225 on the 9-inch wheel felt similar to the 225 on the 8, but with everything turned up a notch. The steering was faster with nearly immediate turn-in and precision that pointed the nose of the vehicle exactly where the driver wanted. This combination rotated a little more easily at corner entry, just enough to set up for the perfect apex and exit, and it felt very planted as the car powered away from turns. There was more traction available for everything our drivers asked it to do, from combined inputs to braking or acceleration, and the result was average lap times that were a little over half a second faster than the same size tire on narrower wheels. The 245 tire on the 8-inch wheel matched the lap time of the 225 tire on the 8-inch wheel down to the hundredth of a second, but it didn't feel as willing to do what was being asked of it and it was far off the subjective feel provided by the 225 on the 9. The turn-in was slower, and there was a slight delay between input and response. The traction was there, but it never felt as sharp as the narrower tires. The front end pushed a bit more before finding grip, and the rear wasn't as planted, especially through the S's where it took longer to settle before loading up for the next transition. It was still very good, and if our team had never driven any of the other combinations, the 245 on the 8 would have felt very satisfying. But as it stands, our drivers were unanimous that it was the least preferred option of the group. The 245 on the 9-inch wheel was an interesting combination for our team. Comparing it to the 225 on the 9-inch wheel, the outright traction felt the same or maybe even slightly higher, but it wasn't as athletic or eager. There was a softness to the way it responded, so with the 245, our drivers had to trust it was going to do what was asked, whereas the 225 just did it right now. The turn-in wasn't as sharp or confidence-inspiring, and it wasn't as adept through faster transitions. It seemed to make up for some of that shortcoming through the highest speed corners on the track, though, where our drivers could commit and once again trust the lateral grip to pull through. Ultimately, this combination set the fastest average lap by eight hundredths of a second. That difference is likely within the noise of our testing, so it could be argued that it tied with the 225 on the 9. But at the track, we live and die by the stopwatch, and the 245 on the 9 set the fastest time in the test. So what did we find out? Well, just like last time, the key takeaway is that the combination of tire width and wheel width is more important than tire size alone. Once again, testing has demonstrated that if you want to go faster, simply stuffing the widest tire you can fit under your fenders isn't the way to go. 
If those wide tires aren't properly supported by the wheels, there's a good chance you're going to be slower than you would be with a narrower tire with better wheel support. Like we found before, the 225 on the 9 and the 245 on the 9 were very close, but this time the 245 on the 9 had the slightest advantage. And like we also found before, the pattern seems to indicate a 245 on a 10 inch wide wheel would be the fastest combination of all if we could fit it on our BRZs. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And be sure to go to TireRack.com if you want more details on our test results. And if you want to see more test content like this in the future, be sure to leave your comments and suggestions below and like, share, and subscribe.